Yeah, great to be here. Uh, so I spent most of my career in the US Army, and I had a, a mentor of mine, a general, who really impressed on me the importance of the big ideas. And that's what I think this week is all about, is what are the big ideas, um, and how does it underpin probably the most important idea in cybersecurity, which is trust. Mm -hmm. So I want to throw out just a few big ideas that I think captures a bit of what you've heard uh, during the panel so far and, and during the first panel. Uh, the first one is this idea of safe tech, uh, technology that is secure by design. So specifically designed, built, tested, deployed to dramatically reduce the number of flaws that can be exploited by all manner of cyber threat actors. You know, we have perversely normalized a world where the technology that underpins the critical services that we rely on for water, for healthcare, for power, for transportation, for communication, the devices that we rely on every minute of every day are all built on an insecure technology foundation. We've normalized the fact that we have shifted the burden of cybersecurity onto individuals and small businesses which are least prepared to bear that burden. We've normalized this crazy malalignment of incentives where technology companies have prioritized speed to market and driving down cost and cool features over security. So security gets bolted on. It's why we have a billion dollar, multi-billion dollar cybersecurity industry. And essentially, it's given us a shaky technology platform that we rely upon. And it is unacceptable. We talk about the importance of security products. We don't need more security products. We need more secure products. And so we have embarked on a prioritized effort around technology that is secure by design, secure by default, we published the first version of this document in April of this year with six of our international partners. We just released the new version of it today uh, with another seven international partners to include our very gracious hosts, uh, as well as our colleagues from Japan. Uh, and what it does is it takes the baselines for the principles behind Secure by Design and it fleshes them out in terms of what does it actually mean? What does it mean to software manufacturers? What does it mean to consumers? What does Secure by Design look like? And I think, frankly, this is the most important thing that we can do to drive a more safe and secure global technology ecosystem is ensuring that the products and services that we rely on come to us more safe and secure. And so I hope everyone has an opportunity to look at that. It's up on our website at cisa.gov. As a side note, we talk about in there that generative artificial intelligence is just another form of software. So AI, which is gonna be the most powerful technology and the most powerful weapon of our time, must be built with security and safety in mind. So that's one big idea. The second one, corporate cyber responsibility. CEOs, boards, leaders of businesses at all levels need to embrace cyber risk as a business risk just like you would embrace equity risk or franchise risk or liquidity risk and manage it as a matter of good governance. The days of delegating uh, cyber risk to the infotech people, your chief information officer, your chief information security officer, and then firing the poor CISO when you have a breach, those days have to be over. Leaders have to embrace and manage cyber risk as a matter of good governments. Third, persistent operational collaboration. We've been talking about public-private partnerships for decades, and frankly, it's become hackneyed and tired and boring. What we need to do is shift the paradigm to transform these hackneyed public-private partnerships into real-time operational collaboration. 
That is characterized by three things. First, a default to share because we realize a threat to one is a threat to all of us. Second, co-equal partnership between private industry and government with reciprocal obligations for transparency uh, and responsiveness and adding value. Three, shared scalable platforms where we're having a frictionless experience and we're able to use analytics to bring together our visibility across industry, across government, our international partners, to understand the threat and to drive down risk to the global ecosystem. And this essentially is what we've been working on over the past two years with our Joint Cyber Defense Collaborative. That's a platform for the federal government to bring together over 100 international partners, to bring together industry partners so that we understand the threat and we can drive down the risk to the global ecosystem. We live in a world where cyber is a borderless space and threat actors do not need visas or passports to travel the information superhighway. So all that said, you, you were very gracious. You played my video. It didn't have any context, so I'm gonna give you a little context. So we can have corporate cyber responsibility. We can have secure technology. We can have uh, operational collaboration, but that doesn't absolve all of us individuals, families, communities, businesses, large and small, from being good digital citizens. Yeah, and good. so what you saw is our public service awareness campaign, Secure Our World. And we are looking to get everybody to join us on this because very simply it articulates the four things you need to do to stay safe. Enable multi-factor authentication, update your software, be aware uh, of phishing, and passwords and password managers because 98% of cyber attacks is prevented by good cyber hygiene. So individual responsibility and collective cyber defense is the last piece. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director.